Welcome to Now in the 90s, where we look at the game releases of 30 years ago today. This week, space shooting based on a surprising source, an arcade port, and an absolute classic of a Sega Genesis game that still makes no sense. I am your host, Jared, and today is June 16th, 1993. Sometimes bad games can lead to okay-ish games. Released in June 1993 was Bob for both the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Bob is a side-scrolling action game. Run, jump, and shoot everything that is in you as you make your way through every level. Your weapons have limited ammunition, however, so replenish them with ammo pickups and find different gadgets to help you traverse the stages like umbrellas and trampolines. Fight bosses at the end of levels and every now and then do a vehicle-based racing section. Bob was developed by Grey Matter and published by Electronic Arts. Let's get this out of the way first. Bob is an acronym. It stands for, I don't actually know. It doesn't say what it means anywhere in the instruction manual or in the game itself. I've heard it means bug outer space bot, but I have no confirmation of that. If anyone knows for sure what it means, please tell us in the comments to help us sleep at night. Watching the gameplay of Bob, you can't help but notice an uncanny familiarity, almost as if you've seen this before, because it just looks so similar, though you know you've never played it. That's because Bob was made using the exact same game engine as the Wayne's World game, which released just a couple of months earlier. The graphic style is the same, the movement of Bob matches Wayne, and I swear even the jumps are exactly the same. The biggest difference though is that Bob isn't an absolute garbage fire of a game. It's actually decent, if a bit bland. It has plenty of cute animations, and the game itself oozes early 90s. When you finish levels, sometimes Bob will say things like, totally, with the game as generic sounding as Bob and being overly plain, how do you even advertise it? Well, I don't think they figured it out either. This is the only magazine ad they ever did, and it doesn't offer a whole lot of information about the game itself. Other than the fact that it says this is Bob and that this is his gun, which is also an acronym? Oh, well great, what does gun stand for? Go under Neptune? Gun? Uber? Nice. Get up, nerd. Bob did get a multi-page preview in Nintendo Power issue 49, which is where I first heard of it. Even as a kid, all I could think seeing it was, eh. Reviews were tepid. Electronic Gaming Monthly reviewed the SNES version with an average score of a 6 out of 10. And the Sega Genesis version getting a 6.25 out of 10 Take that, Nintendo nerds. Bob's only ever official re-release was onto the EA Replay Collection for the PlayStation Portal in 2006, as a filler game or something, I guess. More interestingly, in 2008, someone just buying up hard drives on eBay managed to get one that just so happened to have the entire source code to Bob. So now, someone could finally remaster it. Anyone? Anyone? For every Capcom classic, there's a Capcom Forgotten. Released in June 1993 for the Sega Genesis was Cheeky Cheeky Boys. <laughs> Cheeky Cheeky Boys is a side-scrolling hack-and-slash game. Travel to the end of each stage running, jumping, and slashing your sword against all variety of enemies. You can break open walls to find bonuses, collect magic orbs for spell attacks, and sometimes have levels where you're flying or swimming. Collect money and spend them at shops for more upgrades. Fight bosses at the end of each level and get to the end to save the human kingdom. Cheeky Cheeky Boys began life as an arcade game in Japan in 1990, developed by Capcom. They licensed the game out for home console ports, with this Sega Genesis one being done by Visco, who is best known for also developing, um, I'm gonna go with Andro Dunos for the Neo Geo. Seriously, their work is super obscure. Now, in spite of the name, Cheeky Cheeky Boys for home console has a glaring omission from the arcade original. There is no two-player co-op. It is single player only. However, to make up for it, you can select between the blue Cheeky Boy or the red one. Blue has stronger sword attacks, whereas red has higher magic capacity, which you'll ignore because he sucks. Depending on who you ask, Cheeky Cheeky Boys is either an enjoyable, simple arcade playthrough or a dull, boring, outdated, worthless game. Game Fan Magazine said the former, with high review scores like an 89% and an 87%. Whereas English newspaper The Nottingham Post scored it with a 54%. If you want to play the boys yourself, your best shot is with the Capcom Classics Collection Volume 2, the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, or the PSP Collection. This game was either a huge part of your childhood or it's haunted you for decades, 
or it's both, released in June 1993 for the Sega CD, was Echo the Dolphin. Good day 19. I am concerned about the crew. After all, Echo the Dolphin is not just a game, it is an adventure. The graphics are so real, they don't want to go into the sea anymore. 27 levels of danger, mystery, and beauty, all through the eyes of a dolphin. Simply brilliant. Thank goodness, my trusty skipper Pierre has no interest in this new game. Echo the Dolphin is a side-scrolling adventure game. Play as a dolphin, swimming through vast ocean reefs, using sound waves to move objects underwater to clear paths, and jumping out of the water at high speeds for sick jumps and replenishing your air. Then aliens invade and suck up everything in the ocean. Then Echo has to travel through time, find the lost city of Atlantis, defeat the Vortex Queen, and make his way back to Earth. You know, normal dolphin things. Echo the Dolphin was originally released for the Sega Genesis in December of 1992, which we completely missed that in our show a few months back, our bad, that's on us. The Genesis version was a best seller and is constantly in the discussion for the best games on the platform. It's also infamous for being really, really difficult. There are tons of mazes underwater, obtuse puzzles that can take a long time to finish, and this is all while Echo has limited air while underwater. It's games like Echo the Dolphin that has perpetuated this belief that games from this era were all made intentionally difficult because of the rental market. If kids could just go to their local blockbuster or family video, rent a game and finish it, well, then they'll never need to buy it, ready to move on to the next game. For anyone who has ever said this or believed it, well, it turns out you were right. One of the developers of Echo the Dolphin, Ed Enunziata, made a tweet in 2012 stating plainly, I was paranoid about game rentals and kids beating the game over the weekend. So I, uh, made it hard. That you did, Ed! That you did. Of course, that was about the Sega Genesis version of Echo the Dolphin, and we're talking about the release of the Sega CD port. Was that changed for this one? Well, a little. The CD version has several new levels that were not in the original game. Some of the enemies are slightly easier to avoid, and more importantly, if you die, you can restart at checkpoints instead of having to start the entire level over. And of course, CD quality music and improved audio. People loved the original Echo Genesis game, like a lot. So when it came to the Sega CD Echo, reviewers were just as enthusiastic about it. Electronic Gaming Monthly gave it really high scores, except for one guy pointing out that it's barely an upgrade over a great cartridge. GamePro Magazine gave the Genesis original perfect scores all around, and then gave the Sega CD version slightly less scores for some reason? Reviews used to make no sense at the time. Being such a massive seller, Echo the Dolphin would go on to get many ports and sequels. Echo, Tides of Time would release in 1994, Echo Jr. a year later, and there's an Echo game on the PlayStation 2. The Sega CD port of Echo would be brought to Windows PCs in 1995, and every later port of Echo the Dolphin, like the one for Nintendo 3DS and Nintendo Switch Online, would be of the Sega Genesis original and not the Sega CD upgrade. Also being much more difficult than he needs to be for every other release this week, here's Editor Dylan. WWF Royal Rumble on the SNES is a huge improvement over the previous game. Now you can play actual Royal Rumble matches with six wrestlers in the ring. But is it perfect? Well... WWF Royal Rumble on Super NES! It's perfect. With more WWF superstars than ever before. Unbelievable six men in the ring at once. No holds barred. Anything goes action. It's a slug best. That's perfect. Each wrestler's specialty move. Go in there. The doom zone prayer. It's out of control. The bonsai drop. Total chaos. The perfect plex. Oh, did you see that? WWF Royal Rumble on Super NES. Coming June 8th. Perfect. Yes, it's perfect. Also, did he say June 8th? Oopsie. Conflicting information makes us ballpark what week a game comes out. So if this game should be on last week's episode, hey, at least we're pointing it out. After all, when has a company ever delayed a game past the date they advertised? Am I right? Dungeon Master for the SNES is one of those games where you think, man, if only there was some sort of device that I could easily point and click with. But even if the SNES mouse did exist for about 11 months now, it still wouldn't save the monotony of the dull gameplay. 
right. It may have been a legend on the PC, but unlike a fine wine, Dungeon Master has not gotten better with age. In fact, it may have turned a little sour. And before you tell me I'm being too critical, I'm just reading the Game Pro review. I repeat. Game Pro said this. Game you could shoot me and I'd still give you a 4 out of 5 Fun Factor Pro could barely muster a slight smile and a thumbs up for it. So if you like Dungeon Master on the SNES, get mad at them, not me. Vampire Master of Darkness is a Castlevania clone exclusive to the Game Gear. At least it is for us in North America, because like Land of Illusion, everybody else got this on the Master System, which is basically a dirty word here. Technically I should have bleeped out this game and Dungeon Master. Please don't to monetize us. So when you compare Castlevania on the NES to Master of Darkness on the console that shall not be named, it's no comparison. Castlevania wipes the floor with it in almost every aspect. But since we only got the Game Gear version, we should only compare it to the Game Boy Castlevania games. And you know what? If you want a portable action side-scrolling vampire slaying romp through a gothic horror setting, surprisingly, Vampire Master of Darkness is probably the best of the bunch. Unless you count Kid Dracula, which is better than all of them combined. Too bad it's also more expensive than all of them combined. Seven games released on these five consoles this week in 1993. It really does help when people let us know they're excited for a specific game release. In fact, if it wasn't for someone in the comments mentioning they were excited for Streets of Rage 2, we would have missed it and wouldn't be able to talk about it until a later version released. We quickly rewrote and redid a lot of stuff in a much shorter time span. But damn it, we still hustled to make sure it released right on time. So again, we appreciate it when you leave us your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you all same time next week. Thank you, Dylan. Bob is not sought after by anyone. It released costing $59.95. For just the game alone, the SNES version is worth $17 and only $40 complete. The Sega cart isn't much better, being at $15 and $48 respectively. Cheeky Cheeky Boys is obscure enough that it's this week's biggest value gainer. It released at a budget price of $39.99, and now just the game cartridge is still worth a solid $37. With the box and manual, it goes up to $142. Echo's value has all but dried up. It was a $50 Sega CD game when it came out, and now just the disc is only $18, and the complete one is only worth $26. And that's it for today. Next week, Battletoads. That's it. I'm not kidding. It's all Battletoads. I'm your host, Jared, and this was now in the 90s. Thank you so much for watching Now in the 90s. I want to thank some patrons like Ben, Andrew, and Glenn. Please like the video and leave a comment down below, especially if you've ever played any of these games. If you're in a position to help the channel grow, please consider checking out our Patreon. Link is in the description down below. Please subscribe if you aren't already, and if you already are a subscriber, thank you so much for watching this show every single Friday. I've never beaten Echo the Dolphin. I was too dumb of a kid to figure it out, and now I'm afraid if I go back and try to play it, I would just discover that I'm too dumb of an adult to figure it out.